Hello, uh, this is Josh Engebretson from Thunder Beast Games, and uh, in this video I'm going to be downloading the Atomic Game Engine from GitHub. Um, I'm be going to be compiling the engine in uh, Visual Studio and uh, showing how that works. And then also there's some uh, new changes to the Visual Studio build, uh, the Atomic Editor, and some other things I'll kind of cover as we go forward with this. Um, also, I will be showing some Visual Studio, no, Visual Code, or, yeah, BS Code, BS Code, the new uh, code editor from Microsoft, which is really good at JavaScript and TypeScript and those funky kind of new languages that everybody really likes. Um, so this is a, uh, not going to be edited or anything, this is just going to be me prattling on. So I may screw up a few times, um, but with that in mind, let's just get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make myself a little folder here and uh, recording video and typing can be a little tricky, so bear with me. Uh, and I'm going to go into it. Yes. So we have a little MSVC folder in our dev folder because that's kind of what we're doing here. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and go to the wiki, which has some nifty build instructions. And I'm going to clone the engine. just like so. So what I'm doing here is I am using git clone to pull down the Atomic Game Engine source code. Uh, this is a relatively quick endeavor. And once it is complete, I will also pull down the uh, examples. The examples are in a separate repo. This is like the JavaScript examples that show how to use components and things and we will pull those down as well because we will be running an example and if i can manage to paste inside a dos box here all right so now that we're doing that um what i can do is we're going to need uh cmake and we're going to need visual studio of course and i'm using visual studio 2013 so I'm gonna go ahead and make myself an Atomic Game Engine build folder. This is where the source code will be built and our binaries generated. And from inside this folder, I'm gonna go ahead and run CMake, generating a Visual Studio project for a 64-bit build. Just like so. And this will just take a moment while it analyzes everything and figures out what it needs to do. And I'm done. So if I go into my dev folder and I go into our new MSVC area, I have a Visual Studio solution ready to go. I can load that up. Um, I'm making some improvements to the Visual Studio and solution. So we have things like source groups now. Instead of having a, like a nice long list of source files, we actually have things broken down into source groups. Um, I'm going to go to the Atomic Editor, and I am going to set this as the startup group, or startup program, and then I'm just going to go ahead and build it. So um, this is building, and uh, right now I just have it, I don't have it doing a parallel build, I have it building on one core, so it's going to take a second. Um, what else can I say about this? Oh, there are some nifty things going on in the background. Uh, basically, the JavaScript bindings are automatically generated from inside the, the solution. So what that means is that I can actually make uh, modifications to the C++ class headers and, and class implementations, and I can um, and those changes will be automatically exposed to JavaScript um, just when I go and recompile the engine. The, the bindings will be regenerated. There's actually a C++ uh, processor um, inside, if I can find it. So in, that's not where I want to be. I want to be in JS bind. There we go. So if I go ahead and go inside JS bind, this is an actual uh, C++ parser that's uh, built and included with the engine that can actually go through all the engine header files, look at the classes, look at uh, their, their method signatures, their members and things, and automatically generate bindings for you. So let's see. While this is building, which it is now on the JavaScript stuff, let's go ahead and go over to Visual Studio Code and open that up. And uh, I can just go ahead and open, uh, we'll 
open this guy right here. This is the new space game example. Um, so this is basically just a, an atomic example. It could be loaded inside the atomic editor. Um, it's just a bunch of files that make up the example. Some JavaScript files, music, uh, some other JavaScript scripts. We have a new skinning system with the, with the new UI. So we have a skin defined here. We have some sounds, we have some sprites, we have some UI files with logic and everything. Um, so the nifty thing is that we're working on uh, some integration with um, with this, and uh, so that you'll be able to use it uh, conveniently for for editing uh, atomic projects. And um, just as a really initial way of doing this, uh, what I have is if you hit Control E, and you do actually that's not how you do it. It's um, let's see. I think I actually have to get command shift P. Yes, configure task runner. And so what that will do is it'll open up a uh, JSON file where you can define different tasks that can be run on, on your project. And just so you don't have to watch me type this and modify it and everything, I actually already have this going over here. And we'll take a look at it in a second when I can paste it in here. And so all this is is a really simple little JSON object that um, uh, it specifies like what command to run and um, some arguments on it. So basically this is all ready to go now as far as just being able to run from VS Code. So let's go back to Visual Studio, which is where the native build is. And we can see that we actually did finish building and it was a roaring success. Um, so from inside here, what I want to do is let's go to our project properties here. And first off, let's just like, we just built the, 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 the editor from source. So let's go ahead and set a, a breakpoint in it, okay? So what we do need is we need some command line ar arguments. So in the latest version of Atomic, you can actually specify the editor to run as the editor, or it will run as the player. And you can um, basically, uh, it's like a player build that... Um, allows it to run in its own process. And that there's a bunch of stuff to say about that, but I'll spare you for this video. So what we wanna do is we wanna specify that we're gonna be running it as a player, and then we wanna give it the project that it's going to be running, okay? So let's just go into where we cloned the atomic examples, and let's pick the new space game folder, and let's go ahead and put that in as where we're gonna be running it. And now when I go ahead and apply this, um, if, yeah, look at that. I love Windows. So basically, yeah, the apply is below my taskbar. That's really swell. Um, I can tab down to it. Hey, <laughs> that's really lame. Okay, so if I go ahead and I do a uh, start without debugging, and we're running. All right, let's turn this down a little bit. And I can go ahead and just kind of play the space game. So this is, uh, we just built this from source and we're running an uh, example that we cloned from source. So if I go ahead and I go into, let's just go into where the uh, uh, VM fires up here. And we'll just put a breakpoint in the constructor just as an example. Uh, right where we're making our new JS metrics, which is another new thing that's coming. Okay. So if I go ahead and I debug here, I should hit that breakpoint and voila. So we have uh, all the normal breakpoint handling and all that of a debug build. And uh, so the Visual Studio solutions are uh, pretty clean, pretty nice and all that. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stop debugging. Okay, so now what we have is we have a build of the editor. And if I go back here, this is where we built to. So I saved us some time and I just knew that ahead of time. So all I'm doing here is specifying the atomic editor is the program to basically run, okay? And what arguments to give it are basically the same as what we did in Visual Studio. So we're specifying the player and then the project, all right? So if I hit Control Shift B, it's not gonna work. Control Shift B, there we go. You gotta really mean it, I guess. Um, so now what I'm doing is I'm running Visual, or I'm running the atomic player uh, from Visual Studio Code. So I go ahead and I can play it from here too. And that also means that I can go ahead and go into my enemy, for instance, and just do a really minor change, just make the enemies bigger. 
save the file, and then if I hit Control Shift B, and I go back in, so now my now they now my enemies are bigger. So basically, there's a uh, editing loop right here inside Visual Studio Code. It's pretty simple, but pretty effective too. Um, this is a high-quality uh, JavaScript editor, and uh, we'll open up the door for things like TypeScript and all that kind of stuff as well. So um, Visual Studio Code is new, and um, I hope they stick with it. And uh, it's all, it's based on the same stuff as uh, Adam IO. So even if Visual Studio, even if Microsoft decides, you know, that this isn't what they're going to do, who knows? Um, we still have Adam IO, and that's also cross-platform. So no matter what, we're covered on awesome JavaScript IDEs, and there's always the Atomic Editor JavaScript IDE as well, which is really good at uh, tweaking code, especially when you're getting into the like just making you know little adjustments and things um so there you have it we have visual studio code actually vs code i guess and uh visual studio and that's about all i have to say about it so uh i'll probably follow up on in a, in a video pretty soon about how uh, js bind can be used to add new functionality but until then this is josh engabretson from thunderbeast games and i will talk to you and see you later